Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France Venquette debate. We're in the company of uh, Nikos uh, Tsafos. He joins us uh, from Washington. Uh, he is uh, the author of uh, Looking at the Greek Context. Actually, let me get that headline right. I'm, the name of the book, author of Beyond, Greek, uh, Beyond Debt, The Greek Crisis in uh, Context. There you go. Th thank you for being back with us. Thanks as well to Steve Keen, the author of Debunking Economics, and Yves Bertoncini, who uh, is the director of the Jacques Delors Institute, headquartered here, here in Paris. Uh, Nikos Tsafos, what happens tomorrow night at midnight for the Greeks? Well, we don't know really what happens. Um, I think tomorrow you're going to have a default towards the IMF. Um, it is not clear how worse things could get. We already have a bank holiday. We already have limits on withdrawals. We already have capital controls. Um, I think it is fairly clear from today's developments. Uh, I was fairly pessimistic about whether this referendum was going to happen, or let me rephrase that. I didn't think this referendum was going to happen uh, until today, and I think uh, today's events have made clear that uh, the European response is you should go ahead and have a referendum. So. I think we have given up much hope in terms of a solution that could be negotiated um, this week. And so I think we're headed with slightly more tension uh, in among the Greek electorate, uh, slightly worse conditions for honest and real debate. Uh, but I'm not quite sure exactly uh, what each additional day is going to bring. All right. You talk about the tone of the debate, the Greek prime minister uh, defiant in his warning uh, against those that are critical of his referendum. Today, the ECB decided to withhold an increase in liquidity to Greek banks and forced the Bank of Greece to recommend measures for a bank holiday and a limit on bank withdrawals. One thing is clear, the refusal of a short extension and the attempt to nullify a democratic procedure is an act deeply offensive and shameful for the democratic traditions of Europe. Uh, remarks like that one infuriating uh, negotiators, starting with the president of the European Commission, who staged a noon press conference this Monday. Our efforts were broken unilaterally by the announcement of the referendum and campaigning to say no to this agreement without the whole truth being spoken. Playing one democracy against 18 others is not really an attitude worthy of the great Greek nation. Yves Bertoncini. Well, with all due respect, I think all this is a bit juvenile. Uh, I mean, it's not me, it's the other one. I'm not to blame. He lied. I mean, he lied to me. It's a, we know from the start that this is a kind of uh, liar poker and that Tsipras is playing kind of uh, Cold War strategy uh, the tyrants from the weak to the strong, and now he's just playing a new card, which is a referendum. But at the end of the day, what is at stake is more essential, and I would like these heads of states and governments to be able to jump a bit higher, you know, at the level of their responsibility. The, the debate is about Greece. But when, you, but when you see the markets have tanked, what is it, their worst law, single-day losses yeah, in years, tomorrow. hasn't that concentrated the minds enough? Or but, are we over the juvenile, as you yeah, put that, it, the, the that's why this rhetoric? should not have happened. Greece is only 2%, 2-3% of the GDP of the whole European Union, Eurozone. It's nothing. Not, not, so... Helping Greece a bit more is needed. Paying for our own mistakes is necessary. So there will be a deal simply as long as the Greek people want to remain part of the monetary union and normally a, a va an overwhelming majority of the Greek people want to remain part of the European monetary union. And on the other side, as long as European leaders will deal with not only, you know, the so-called moral hazard, if we help Greece and they don't reform enough, of course they won't reform enough. But it's not a matter of moral hazard, it's a matter of geopolitical risk. Because if Greece was to... Uh, yes, but are the Germans going to hear that argument if they've been reading uh, editorials in Bild Zeitung every day 
telling yeah, you but that that's 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 the, the core of the of the, of the debate meaning uh, facing g responsibilities at the highest level i mean if not only the germans because there are other there are other countries reluctant to go further because it's true that they have lost their patience vis-à-vis -vis mr tsipras but if they do if they want to destroy part of the monetary union if they want to have a country out of the monetary union affecting not only these countries, because the countries will not be expelled from Europe. Huh? It will still be part of our continent and it will be destabilized. This country will be destabilized. So if they want this, yes, they could obtain this, but that would be a huge historic responsibility. Simply, yes, because some taxpayers in some countries could have to pay a bit more than expected to save Greece and to maintain Greece <clears throat> within the AMU. All right, so the moral hazard argument certainly has been put forward, as has uh, claims made by uh, the German chancellor and the French president that uh, Greece has been properly ring-fenced uh, this time. That is to say that uh, if there is a Grexit, that uh, the other nations uh, won't suffer uh, too badly. First of all, let, let's cross to Athens and say hello to uh, Yanis Paleologos, who uh, is a journalist with Katamarini newspaper and the author of the uh, 13 labor of Hercules on the Greek crisis. Welcome back to the show, sir. First, qu first question to you. Did you go to a bank machine this Monday to try to withdraw cash? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I, I went uh, the previous days. Uh, <laughs> you, your, your thoughts on the situation now with the whole world watching Greece uh, right now, there's, as we speak, there's a rally going on, going on in favor of a no vote. Mm -hmm. uh, we see this Tuesday deadline, which is approaching fast, a Sunday referendum. Did you think it would all come to this, Yanis? I should note there's a rally tomorrow for a yes vote as well. Um, no, I didn't. I mean, I, I, I thought uh, that, uh, you know, there, there had been enough movement on the part of the government uh, away from its uh, extremely unrealistic pre-election promises uh, to seal a deal. The, the two sides, Greece and its creditors, were very close uh, the previous week. Uh, and then uh, it all went uh, haywire, and uh, part of the blame for that has to go to the creditors because uh, they should have uh, uh, accepted more of the Greek proposal uh, instead of, you know, dousing it in, in, in red ink uh, and insisting that whatever they proposed in early June should be accepted. But on the other hand, the move to, to call a referendum uh, three days before the expiration of the program is a move uh, of incredible uh, uh, irresponsibility, which uh, very directly endangers Greece's position in the Eurozone and has already uh, brought us uh, into a condition of, of uh, a third world country. Uh, and, and so uh, Alexei Tsipras overplayed his hand, you say? Um, I don't think I would describe it like that. I would say that uh, he saw that there was a negative reaction within his party to the proposals that he had made uh, and signed off on on Monday. Uh, then the creditors with their negative reaction on Wednesday gave him uh, the final push he needed, and he decided that he preferred party unity over the good of the country, and he called the referendum. That's how I see it. Steve Keen. I, again, the Euro's position, the European Union's position has been utterly intransigent. They've been out to break Syriza. Right, but was it reckless and on the part of, of Alexei Tsipras to call this referendum when he uh, caught a whiff uh, uh, that uh, perhaps he'd have a backbench revolt on his hands within his own Syriza party? Well, I mean, if he, has, he doesn't need a back, he doesn't need a rot within Syria. All he needs is for the, uh, the, the independent Greeks to decide to leave because they, the, the sole reason they partnered with Syria and gave the majority was because they were agreeing to anti-austerity. Now, if the independent Greeks broke away and joined the Passos and passed a vote of no confidence in the Syria party government, it would collapse. You'd have to call not just, you know, not just a referendum now, there'd be a new election coming up. That's how close we are. And the fact that the Europeans played this as if they were pushing against a unified Greek government which had a majority in parliament and which they could bend to their will 
was a complete miscalculation by the European authorities, as well as extremely bad economics. And by the way, I'll say um, one thing Eve made a mention about earlier, saying this is a private debt problem initially. He's dead right. And that's the, the analysis of the role of private debt in causing the global crisis and the particular manifestation of Greece has been completely left out of these discussions. I'm glad to see somebody else bringing that in here. Nikos Tsafos, your thoughts on, on this, uh, this option to trigger a referendum? I mean, I agree with Yanis in terms of the, the motivations for it. Um, why Tsipras held this referendum, I think it is basically his last effort to uh, maintain the party and maintain his grip on power. It's, it's fairly clear, I think, to most people that if this is a yes vote, uh, the government, if not will resign, will be forced to resign, will be under huge pressure to resign. It is really difficult to see how the Europeans are going to sign a deal with a government that has just held a referendum to try to avoid implementing this deal. Um, and if one is slightly more cynical and sinister, it is a way to say that the way to stay in power for Syriza is to have a no vote, uh, have Greece exit the Eurozone. If you look at its economic program, uh, and the reason I think that the Europeans have been correct to not give in to Syriza's requests, it is basically a program uh, premised on increased state spending and, if not printing money, if you don't have the money to print, uh, borrowing money and have someone else pay for it. Um, in many ways, the only way for Syriza to implement its economic program that it promised to the Greek people is to have a printing press uh, and to be able to essentially print money should. at will to be able to hire uh, public sector employees, to be able to give uh, wages and benefits to the people. So in many ways, uh, this is fairly close to the economic program that Syriza proposed. And a no vote could possibly uh, get Syriza there, provided that the country doesn't uh, get into a much uh, deeper crisis and talk about social tensions and but violence. Uh, Yanis uh, Paleologos, uh, you mentioned that as we see those images of those uh, supporting Syriza outside parliament in favor of a no vote, that tomorrow there's a rally uh, of those in favor of the yes vote. I know, uh, again, I know that London bookmakers say that uh, the yes are the early favorites. Uh, what's your prediction on that vote? Well, uh, I mean, information we have here shows that initially at least uh, the no vote uh, is, uh, has come out of the gate stronger. I, I still think at the end uh, there will be a narrow victory for the yes vote as people realize what's really at stake. But that's another point I'd like to make. The, uh, uh, it's one thing to call a referendum. It's another thing to call it three days before the expiration of the program, thereby guaranteeing that there will be chaos and, and uh, you know, going to a referendum with closed banks. But uh, the government is lying to the people. It's saying to the people that the vote is about rejecting or accepting the creditor's offer, which won't be on the table even by then. Uh, and it's not telling them that what's really at stake is euro membership. It lied about this before the election of January, saying that you can have the euro without austerity. And it's lying now. And people need to realize that. Yeah. By the way, France's president, he's still uh, rooting for a compromise after a Monday morning crisis meeting with his cabinet where he said Athens still had a few hours to change its mind. France's economy is robust, much stronger than four years ago. France has nothing to fear about what could happen next. France isn't trying to help because it's scared. It's taking action because of its responsibility to do so. We have to make sure that the Eurozone and Europe can continue on the path we've wished for, on the basis of responsibility and solidarity. Yves Bertoncini, uh, is the French president wrong? Uh, he, he's, he's saying there that uh, if Greece opts out and defaults and is out of the Eurozone, that France has what it takes. He's, he's pretty sure of himself there that uh, there won't be a knock-on effect. Uh, he might be right, but I mean, he might be right as an accountant, as a minister of economy. Uh, but I mean, he's a head of state. And what he has to take into account is not only the impact on French economy, it's the impact uh, uh, in, at, 
in, on Greece, on a region, and on the southeast of Europe, which is destabilized, where there are migration flows not controlled, where there could be terrorist infiltration from Daesh, where there could be a kind of new alliance between Greece and, and Vladimir Putin's Russia. So, I mean, he's a bit crazy saying, well, you know, for, for us, for the French economy, it's, it's, well, it won't be that bad. It could be, we could prevent, uh, we could, well, we could be preserved for this. But it's not, that's not what is at stake. It's not the French economy, which is, is in a, not that a good situation, by the way. It's the future of Greece, the future of Southeast Europe, the future of the monetary union, which could be... How much uh, would the credibility of the, of the euro be dented? By a Grexit. Of course, it would be dented because would it, would it that be, would mean that it's some not people say that either the euro, say it's all or nothing. That either the euro continues to grow, or the minute people start leaving, there's a psychological effect and it starts to unwind. Of course, I mean the financial markets will tell us about this, but I would prefer uh, decisions not putting us in the hands of financial markets' reaction. Because by the way, the financial markets' reaction, uh, as regards Greece, were 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 very excessive suddenly when they decided not to finance Greece any longer. But during 10 years, they were completely wrong by when financing Greece as if Greece was Germany. So I wouldn't make any decision at the European level to letting the final cut of this movie in the hands of the financial markets. Steve King, uh, you heard uh, Yves Bertangini. Uh, a, a, a Grexit could mean uh, Greece turning to Russia, could mean... Uh, uh, and a huge consequences uh, for the entire continent? Well, the consequences for the continent have been caused by the euro in the first place. And I, 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 I was differing with my good friend Yanis Varoufakis here, who's always tried to keep Greece inside the euro, and I completely disagree with your Greek correspondent on that point, saying they lied. I know that uh, Yanis has been trying desperately to re-engineer how the euro is structured so that Greece can stay in it. He's described a bit like the Hotel California. You should never book into the Hotel California, but once you do, you can never leave. Well, I, I'm, I disagree with Yanis there. I think they should leave. And I think the only way to get credibility back for Europe and back for the European program is to engineer your way out of the euro, and this will probably may well be the start of that. So um, the consequences have to be disturbing because you've built a monetary union. I've, I've described it like a mesh spit with one wing. It was bound to crash. It happens to have crashed, crashed on Greece's watch. But you should you see they have to re de engineer the euro and go back to reasonable national currencies or currency blocks. Or you have to bring in what the euro never had and should have had, which is a European treasury. And the European Investment Bank could have been used that way. Of course, that's what Giannis has been proposing for six years. And as he's told me, he can't even get the European, the finance minister to discuss the economic impact of their programs, let alone the idea of a way of revising the economic structure of Europe. So I think Europe will survive. But I think if, if Europe doesn't de break away from the euro, that is more likely to lead to the fragmentation of Europe than anything else. Nikos Tsafos, do you agree? I disagree with this. I think that for Greece, the exit is going to be disastrous. Uh, for years, economists have said that you need to leave so you can devalue your way into growth. Um, and the good thing about this is that we have had an experiment with this. The only time where Greece has had significant economic growth in the post-war era was from 1953 until 1973, where it had a stable currency and a fixed exchange rate against the U.S. dollar. In the 1980s, we had successive devaluations, and exports as a share of the GDP declined from 1980 at 24% to 1990 at 18%. You can't just devalue your way into growth. And so I generally uh, challenge the assumption that having our own currency is going to make a material difference. What it's going to lead is to rampant inflation and our ability to essentially pay, make payments to the public sector and social benefits purely through printing money. So I think that the economics of this are really bad. The politics of this are really bad as well. I, uh, I'm really worried about the cohesion of Greek society. Yanis is talking about that being on the ground. And I see this from people I talk to. I'm headed back to Greece uh, later this week. And I think there is a real sense, and I, and I said this on uh, Friday night to friends, is I've been optimistic about Greece. I've been pessimistic about Greece over the last five years. I've never been scared about Greece until Friday night. Uh, we're talking about something that's much bigger going on here, a rhetoric and language and tensions uh, that I haven't seen in my lifetime and that we have to go to our parents or our grandparents to really be able to see. And I also agree 
um, would leave the, the broader question of what happens to the Eurozone once one member is out, and possibly even the European Union. We really don't know whether you can exit the Eurozone without exiting the European Union. If that, if the one domino falls, I think then suddenly the question becomes, who's next? If the European Union and the Eurozone is not willing to defend the Union at all costs, then what's next? At what next trigger point is the next victim going to fall off? So I think it's a really dangerous precedent. Yanis Palaiologos, do you share that fear? Um, I certainly think uh, it would be a, a very uh, great development for the Eurozone if uh, Greece were to exit. Uh, I'm not at all certain that the ring fencing that they're talking about will be successful, so I agree with that. But of course, the, the consequences on the rest of Europe will pale in comparison to the absolutely apocalyptic uh, developments uh, that we're going to have here. We're all already uh, living through... Uh, what I would describe as a mild foretaste of what will happen here if there is a no vote. And uh, people uh, in Greece should know this. And people uh, outside Greece who comment on Greece, sometimes not with a great understanding of what's going, what's going on in the country, should realize that they are uh, encouraging the Greek people to vote themselves out of Europe and into a kind of Balkan uh, disaster zone. All right, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. We're going to see, of course, how events transpire. It's going to be a crucial 24 hours, let alone uh, uh, until the weekend when that referendum finally does happen. I want to thank you, Yanis Palaiologos, for joining us uh, from Athens. I want to thank uh, Steve Keane in London, uh, Nikos Tsafos in Washington, Yves Bertoncini. Stay with us, though. Our Media Watch segment is next. And uh, we say hello to Emma James. Uh, Emma, um, the, uh, the, you've, you, heard, you heard the discussion here, uh, the debate over the conditions of why Tsipras walked away and decided to hold this referendum. Yes, absolutely. And I know that you mentioned earlier there was an article in today's Guardian that compared this moment to a Sarajevo moment. Sarajevo um, 1914, we should exactly. say. Exactly. And to be honest, I felt this was a little overdramatic. Um, the, the write-up says, any government that runs into difficulties in the future will have the Greek option of devaluation as an alternative to endless austerity. Now, there's no doubt that there are potentially very serious consequences to whichever decision is made and whatever happens next. But quite why he chose to compare it to, to Sarajevo and the events that led to the First World War, I don't entirely understand. I think mostly that was done because yesterday was actually the centenary of the murder of Franz Ferdinand. And I think that probably had more to do with it than him genuinely believing the effects were going to be as serious as those we saw that came from World War I. Um, now, interestingly, Alexis Tsipras himself has been tweeting, uh, and he's been quite dramatic about it too, certainly very emotional. In these critical hours, we must remember that the only thing to fear is fear so itself. Quoting Roosevelt in the Great Depression. Yes, and it's interesting. I mean, I suppose the... the At a time when Roosevelt had closed the banks, by the way. Yes, so it is a, the, the opt, opportune moment to, to make a quote like that. Um, the dignity of the Greek people in the face of blackmail and injustice will send a message of hope and pride to all of Europe. So very strong words there. Blackmail, injustice, clearly he feels he's very much in the right. But if we take a look at this um, editorial article in today's Times newspaper by Ian King, who's a British uh, economist and journalist, and he says, Sipras and his naive cronies have no one to blame but themselves. And this is an incredibly damning article um, and very interesting to read as well. It goes into a great deal of detail about the characters involved in this, because often with politicians, we don't know that much about them. But we're starting to really get to know Alexis Tsipras and certainly Yanis Varoufakis. Um, he refers to Varoufakis as the country's narcissistic finance minister. Uh, so certainly not holding back there. Um, 
He then says that the biggest tragedy about this saga is that it was all so avoidable. It could have been avoided when 14 years ago, at the birth of the euro, Greece had been excluded from the single currency, but was admitted, according to accounts at the time, because representatives of the French government, so it's our fault, um, insisted you cannot say no to the country of Plato. Now, he says the more avoidable disaster came later, when Alexis Tsipras and his ragbag coalition of superannuated Marxists, half-baked socialists and hardcore Stalinists told uh, sold Greek voters the lie that there was an alternative to austerity. <coughs> of course, th this is the uh, Murdoch-owned Times of London that's uh, uh, where, where, the, where the author is saying this. There is a lot of recrimination, Yves Bertoncini, towards the French, towards the, German, who then, the Germans, who then went on to lend a lot of money to the Greeks and sell them a lot of weapons. Yes, true. But, I mean, it's up to the Greeks to stop buying so much uh, military weapons and to cut their um, defense expenditures a bit, uh, so to restore a bit of their solvency. All right, and you mentioned uh, the, w he was labeled, what, the rock star economist, uh, the, the finance well, minister. Not so long ago, I was standing here talking to you about how Yanis Varoufakis had been deemed the coolest finance minister ever. Um, but it does seem that the tide is turning, and it's not just in that article in The Times. Um, and some people are pointing out that if you look at his profile on Twitter, um, it speaks of not just swagger, but maybe arrogance too. Um, he describes himself as an economics professor quietly writing obscure academic texts for years until thrust onto the public scene by Europe's inane handling of an inevitable crisis. Now, the other thing that I noticed when looking at his uh, Twitter account is that his last tweet came yesterday uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon. And he said capital controls within a monetary union are a contradiction mm. in terms. The Greek government opposes the very concept. And yet, less than 12 hours later, that's exactly what we've got. So it, that's an interesting one to look at. Was it a U-turn? Um, was he happy about the fact that those capital controls were introduced? It's hard to know. Um, a more level-headed approach coming from uh, Francois Hollande on this one, saying that he hopes negotiations can get back underway with Greece. Um, an agreement is still possible, he says, and France is always available for dialogue. All right, and of, of course, cartoonists are once again having a field day. Absolutely. Um, it's... It seems strange when the, some of the consequences of this are so dire. You know, we've heard that the suicide rate in Greece has rocketed since all of this austerity began, people losing their jobs and just simply not being able to cope. However, people are finding the funny side of it still. Uh, we've got cartoons like this one from The Times where we are experiencing something of a heat wave in Europe at the moment and they've got Greece actually catching fire and taking the whole of Europe with it. Um, and my particular favourite from today is uh, a little further on. There he is. Um, David Haldane drew this cartoon and it has two EU suits in front of a smashed plate and says, this is what happens when you ask Greece to step up to the plate. Oh, dear. Emma James, many thanks. We'll continue to watch uh, the uh, uh, forecast for Greece uh, over the next uh, few days. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.